Presently, Iowans are debating the Iowa Supreme Court's unanimous 2009 decision that held an Iowa statute limiting civil marriage to a union between a man and a woman violated the Equal Protection Clause of the Iowa Constitution. I'm not here tonight to engage, or today, I'm losing track of time already. I'm not here today to engage in a debate of the Varnum decision. The Supreme Court allows its decisions to speak for themselves. Nonetheless, it is important to understand what that decision was about, and perhaps more importantly, what it was not about. Because allegations that the Supreme Court overstepped its authority in that decision are based on a fundamental misunderstanding of what the Varnum decision was all about. An accurate understanding of the narrowness of the court's ruling goes a long way in addressing the criticisms that are currently being directed at the court. The law at issue in the Varnum decision was a statute in which the legislature created a civil contract it called marriage. This statute defined marriage as, quote, a civil contract requiring the consent of the parties capable of entering into other contracts except as herein otherwise provided. In other words, the court considered a statute governing a legal contract, not the religious institution of marriage. Let me read briefly from the opinion. Our Constitution does not permit any branch of government to resolve religious debates and entrust to courts the task of ensuring government avoids them. The statute at issue in this case does not prescribe a definition of marriage for religious institutions. Instead, the statute declares marriage is a civil contract and then regulates that civil contract. Thus, in pursuing our task in this case, we proceed as civil judges, far removed from the theological debate of religious clerics, and focus only on the concept of civil marriage and the state licensing system that identifies a limited class of persons entitled to secular rights and benefits associated with civil marriage. State government can have no religious views, either directly or indirectly, expressed through its legislation. This proposition is the essence of the separation of church and state. As a result, civil marriage must be judged under our constitutional standards of equal protection and not under religious doctrines or the religious views of individuals. And what is the constitutional standard the court applied in Barnum? The Equal Protection Clause Iowans included in the Constitution when Iowa became a state. Iowans included in the Constitution the following language. All laws of a general nature shall have a uniform operation. The General Assembly shall not grant to any citizen or class of citizens privileges or immunities which, upon the same terms, shall not equally belong to all citizens. Dealing with controversial issues has always been part of being a judge. However, the controversy over the Varnum decision has erupted into a retention election battle, as well as calls to change the way Iowa selects their judges. I urge Iowans to question whether we should dismantle Iowa's highly regarded merit selection system because of one controversial decision. Now, Iowans used to elect their judges by popular partisan elections, but over 40 years ago, Iowans wisely decided to insulate judges from the political fray and select judges based upon merit. Merit selection is considered the best way to choose judges because it emphasizes professional qualifications and de-emphasizes partisan politics. Um, when you were, you know, going, hearing the arguments and obviously consulting with the other justices about the decision in the Barnum case, did you have any idea of the pushback that would come in opposition? Well, as one, as one of our, my colleagues recently said publicly, and I agree with him, we weren't naive. Yeah. We understood that the issue was a controversial issue for the citizens. We knew that um, people would be unhappy. And we knew that it might result in something like we're experiencing today. But 
I didn't take an oath of office to make the most popular decision that would allow me to keep my job. At the end of the day, is slightly idealistic because even within retention elections, you have political partisans and stuff. And you know, I don't want to embarrass you, but that is a really sad question because, as a public servant who has been on the court for 17 years, I can tell you that we operate with the highest degree of integrity, fairness, and impartiality we can muster. It is not an unachievable ideal. I don't. I don't think it is an unachievable ideal. I witness it. I witness it.